All right, guys, for section 3.2, we're going to talk about rational numbers and what makes up rational numbers. Now, when you first started learning numbers back probably even before kindergarten, the first thing you started learning about was whole numbers. Uh, and whole numbers are the set of numbers where it starts with zero and goes one, two, three, and continues on forever. And it's whole numbers, and it's all positives. Then later on in school, you started learning about integers, which are whole numbers and their opposites. So it includes negative numbers. Now, rational numbers includes whole numbers and integers, but what it adds in is it adds in any numbers that can be expressed <clears throat> in the form a over b, where a and b are integers and b is not zero. So in other words, you can <clears throat> make them fractions, okay? So it adds in, adds in an extra set into whole numbers and integers, all right? So like rational numbers include decimals, and repeating decimals because they can be written as fractions. Like for example, 29 hundredths can be written as 29 over 100. All right, mixed numbers are also included in a set of rational numbers because any mixed number can be written as an improper fraction. For example, five and three fourths is 23 fourths because we do four times five, get 20, add three and get 23 fourths. Now, the set of rational numbers also include integers because any integer can be written as a fraction. For example, negative seven can be written as negative seven over one. Even just whole numbers, like the whole number three can be written as three over one. So whole numbers are included in that. Now, <clears throat> so it's kind of like you have the big group of, of rationals, uh, rational numbers, and then within that, there's a group of integers, and then within that, there's the group of whole numbers, okay? now. Some numbers are not rational numbers. Decimals that neither terminate nor repeat are called irrational numbers. Okay? And some examples of irrational numbers, for example, would be um, pi. Because pi goes on without n, but it doesn't have any specific repeat or pattern to it. All right. Now, like this number, 8.78, and then it goes 778, and then 7778. It has a pattern, but it doesn't have the same repeating pattern. It's not the same numbers repeating over and over again. So that's an irrational number, okay? So like <clears throat> irrational numbers would fall outside of this. This would be irrational numbers out here. It would not fall into the group of rationals, integers or wholes. They're completely separate, all right? So let's go over and um, let's see, let's... Let's move this up. Let's get that out of the way. Oh, shoot. <clears throat> move this up. I'll get that word irrational numbers out of the way here. There we go. That's better. All right. So look, let's look at four and a half. Now, four and a half can't be considered whole. It also can't be considered integer because it has a fractional part. But what? <clears throat> so the only group that this would fall under would be rationals. Okay, but but it, it does fall under rationals because we could it would be nine halves in fraction form. Four and five tenths or four or four and five tenths, fourteen point five or fourteen and five tenths or fourteen and a half. Um, it's a decimal, so it can't fall under wholes or integers, but it can fall under rationals. <clears throat> Negative forty five is is an integer because it's the opposite of a whole number. And the minute you write down integer, you can also automatically write down rational. If I could write, okay. 14, I think it's pretty easy to see that it's gonna be a whole. And the minute you write down whole, you can also write down integer, and then you can also write down rational. So the whole would fall under all three of those. The number zero, is again a whole, and the minute you write down the, that it's a whole, it also falls under integer, <clears throat> and it also falls under rational. Now, this next one, 1.41421356, 1 and you notice dot, dot, dot keeps going. But there's, this uh, is a decimal that keeps going and going, but there's no pattern or repeating pattern to it. So this would be considered irrational. So that's what makes it different. It doesn't have a pattern that repeats to it. 
Okay, we're gonna flip over to the other side and talk about some stuff on the other side. So flip over. All right, let's practice um, writing some mixed numbers and integers as fractions, because that's ultimately proving that it's a rational number. All right, so like for example, in six and one six, we want to write the rational number as a fraction. Okay, so six and one six, you always take the denominator, multiply it by the whole number. So six times six would be thirty-six and then add your numerator, so we'd have 37, 6. <clears throat> negative 23 uh, is, going, is an integer, so we're going to take that negative 23 and put it over 1. All right. Or sometimes you'll see the negative on the, on the 23 in the numerator, or you might see the, tw the negative just in front of the fraction bar, negative 23 over 1. Okay. 14 and 2 thirds, 3 times 4 would be 12, plus 2 would be 14, and then you always keep that same denominator. And then 7 is a whole number. I think it's pretty easy. You always take a whole number and put it over 1. That would be that in fraction form. Okay. Now, to write a decimal as a fraction or a mixed number, for some reason this always seems to mess people up. What you've got to remember is your place value. This is 84 hundredths. We say hundredths because it ends in the hundredths place. So you always take whatever that number is, at 84, and put it over 100 because it ends in the hundreds place. And then you should always simplify it, right? Put it in the simplest form. So we can <clears throat> divide both of these by four. 84 divided by four is 21. <clears throat> 100 divided by 24 is 25. And when you, there's no <clears throat> other factor that you could divide both of them by, you are in simplest form. Now here, again, it's all about place value. This is always going to be a mixed number because we have a whole number part, 5 and 875 thousandths. So we're going to have a 5 for our whole number, and then we've got to make the fractional part. Now this 875 ends in the thousandths place, so we're going to put 1,000 in the denominator. And then 875, that number goes in the numerator. And then again, we need to simplify this. Now that 5 is going to stay, and what we can divide both... 875 and 1,000 by is, is going to be uh, 125. So 1,000, oops, 1,000 divided by 125 is 8, and 875 divided by 125 is 7. So simplest form is going to be 5 and 7 eighths. And again, we're still concentrating on place value, so we got 26 hundredths, so that ends in the hundredths place. So we're going to put 26 over 100. And then we can divide each of these by 2, all right, to keep equivalent fractions. 26 divided by 2 is 13. 100 divided by 2 is 50. So that simplified is 13 fiftieths. So then here, <clears throat> the shipping weight of a package is 2.875 pounds, or 2 and 875 thousandths of a pound. Write the decimal. This decimal is a mixed number in simplest form. So you're going to keep that whole number part, so this is going to be a mixed number. And then it'd be 875, and it ends in the thousandths place. So we're going to put that over a thousand. And luckily, we just did one above, so we know this is two and seven eighths of a pound. All right. So let's move this up. Now, repeating decimals that actually have a pattern also can be written as fractions. Now. We're going to put a couple examples today, and we'll definitely work some more on this tomorrow. But it's all based on what we do with this. It's actually based on algebra. Okay? If we wanted to write 0.6 repeating as a fraction in simplest form, what we're going to do is we're going to let n represent the number. So I'm going to say n equals, all right, and it's going to be 0. Point, and I'm going to write it without the bar. I'm going to write it just to give you an idea. It's going to be like 6 repeating, and it keeps going. Okay. And then I'm going to multiply each side by 10 here because the one digit repeats. So that's why I picked 10. If two digits repeat, I'd pick 100. If three digits repeat, I'd pick 1,000. And remember, we're allowed to do that to keep that balance in our equation. You notice I have an equation here. And as long as I do the same thing to both sides, I can multiply both these sides by 10. All right? So I'd get 10n equal to, and multiplying by 10 just moves the decimal 1 to the right. So this would be um, 6.666, and that would keep repeating. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract what I originally established as n from 10m to delete, delete the, uh, or eliminate the repeating part. So you can see right here I said n equals 0.6 repeating. So what I'm just going to do, and again I'm allowed to do this because 
this is balanced, so I'm really subtracting the same thing from both sides. I'm going to subtract n from this side. And we said that was equal to 0 0.666 repeating. Now, 10n minus n would give us 9n. It's like saying 10n minus 1n equals. Now, 6.66 repeating minus 0 0.66 repeating. Basically, those that repeating part cancels, and we're left with a 6. Now, see, here's a much easier equation to solve. We're going to divide both sides by 9 to get that variable isolated. And we get n equal to 6 ninths, which we would simplify down to 2 thirds. So 0.6 repeating is 2 thirds as a, as a fraction. Now you notice we ended up dividing by 9. And one digit of 9, because it was like one digit that repeats. Now let's look at one that um, has two digits repeating. Now let me move this up a little bit so you guys can see it a little better. So again, you always start out by setting, saying n equals, and it'd be 0 0.4242, and it would keep going dot, 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 right? And then what you do is, this time you're going to multiply both sides by 100, because two digits repeat. Remember, we're allowed to do this, keep that balance in equations, so we're going to multiply by 100. Because what that will do, it's going to give us 100n, equal to, and it gives us a whole number part, right? Be 4, 2, 4, 2, and it keeps going, right? And we're going to take and subtract that original from it, because this is balanced, so it's like subtracting the same thing from both sides, so I'm going to subtract n on this side. I'm going to bring this down, I'm going to subtract this 0 0.4242, okay? 100n minus basically 1n gives us 99n, equal to, and you notice this cancels out the repeating part, which we don't like that repeating part when we have a fraction. We just get 42, and then it's pretty easy to isolate that variable and solve this. We divide both sides by 99. We basically get n equal to 42 over 99, which will simplify into 14 30 thirds when we divide both numerator and denominator by 3. Now again, you notice when 2 digits repeated, basically the number that repeated ended up being over 99 this time. So there's a little bit of a pattern there, guys. And what we're going to do is I wanted you to see the algebra tonight to see how that kind of works. And then we'll work a little bit more with this tomorrow because I know this is a little bit hard to grasp at first. But I wanted to do it on the notes tonight so you can get a little bit of exposure to it. And then we'll work some more tomorrow with it in class. All right, guys. Thank you for filling out your note sheet, and we'll work some more with this tomorrow.